Today on our 2017 Chevrolet Colorado, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Taconcha Primus IQ trailer brake controller for one to three axles, part number TK90160. So here's what our Primus IQ looks like when it's fully installed. Now it is a proportional brake controller, which means it's going to apply our trailer brakes in the same intensity and at the same time that we apply the brakes in our vehicle. Now what our trailer brake controller is going to do is it's going to take the signal from our brake pedal, so when we press on it, it's going to take that signal following the wires and it's going to send it out to the seven way at the back and it's going to send the proper signal from the back of our seven way to our trailer so our brakes can have the proper signal and the right adjustments of everything. Now the C on our brake controller is going to let us know that the brake controller senses that the trailer is connected so just a quick glance down, we can know if they were connected properly, if there's any issues at the back. The button on top here is gonna be for our boost setting. And we're gonna have three different boost settings. It's gonna be off, one, two, and three. What the boost setting is gonna do is it increasingly is gonna start out with a higher braking percentage, ramping up and ramping up quicker. So if you're on boost three, it's gonna ramp up quicker. Now the lower we have our boost setting, obviously the lower it's gonna be, and if it's at zero, or boost off, it's gonna start at zero and slowly go up. Now if we do have our boost on, all we have to do is glance down, and that second dot is gonna show up, letting us know that the boost level is on. Now we're gonna be able to mount our brake controller all the way straight up and down, or facing down, and anywhere in between, we just wanna make sure that it's nice and level and going in the direction of travel with the vehicle. Our brake controller is gonna automatically acquire the proper level setting, and it's even gonna adjust for when we're traveling up and down hills. The Primus IQ is even gonna give us proportional braking in reverse. Now, if you wanna cancel the boost and hold it off without having to cycle it through, we can actually press on the brake pedal, and then hold the boost button down for approximately five seconds. And then R will show up, canceling the boost out for a total of three minutes so that we can back our trailer up into tight spots without having to worry about the boost setting it coming into play and causing a lot of jerking motion. And this will cancel out and turn back off and go to the original setting after three minutes. Now the really nice thing I like about the proportional style brake controllers over the time delay is that the time delay is gonna send the power out regardless if you're moving or not. And even if you're at a stoplight holding on the brakes, it's gonna send that maximum power out to your trailer brakes, causing some more strain and wearing them down. Whereas if I push the brake in here, we can, it knows that we're not moving because there is inertia sensor inside. So it's not gonna send any out. But then after a few seconds at a stoplight, it is gonna send out a portion of the maximum power to our brakes just to hold the vehicle still and hold the trailer nice and steady. Now that we've seen it, and we've gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're gonna to need to come to the driver's side threshold right here. We're gonna to need to remove this panel to expose the wires for our brake controller. I'm just gonna take a trim panel tool. We're gonna to come up underneath the panel and pry it up, which should release the clips and we can pop it out. I'm just gonna to wanna to work your way across putting pressure to pop it out. Grab underneath or behind the panel if you need to. Then we can pull the panel out. Now the wires we're gonna be looking for are gonna be taped to this harness right here. So we can go ahead and cut that tape away and make sure that those are the wires we need. Now we're gonna to need to test each one of our wires here to see what they do. Now our black is gonna be our ground and our red wire with the green stripe on it should be our power signal. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a circuit tester and make sure that I'm getting a constant 12 volts to it. So we can see that I'm getting constant power there. So that's gonna be my power. Now the white wire with the blue stripe should be our brake signal and we should only get power to it when the brake pedal is depressed. So we can see that we're not getting any power now, but if I press on the brake pedal, that's gonna be our output or the cold side of our brake switch. And the last wire here is gonna be the output from our brake controller that's gonna send the signal to our seven way in the back. 
So now that we've identified the wires and we know each function, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this away so I can get my wire up higher so I can have a little bit more room to work and choose a nice spot for my brake controller. Just wanna be careful when you're cutting the tape back. You don't wanna cut any of the wires inside and cause any shorts. And then once you have a little bit more to work with, you can go ahead and cut off the excess tape. Now we're gonna be cutting off the ends of the heat shrink that's on our wires here and we're gonna strip them all back. Now that we have our wires stripped back, you're gonna to wanna to grab your brake controller harness and we're gonna be making our connections. Now, we're gonna to need to pick up some butt connectors and I got some heat shrink butt connectors just to help out with some protecting our wires and keeping the moisture out and hopefully keeping corrosion buildup from happening. Now, if you need some of these, you can pick some up on our website using part number DW05744-5 and that'll be for a package of five. So we can go ahead and start with our white wire that's on our harness. That's gonna be for our ground. So we can go ahead and slip the wire in and crimp it in place. And since it's for our ground, we can take our black wire coming out of our vehicle and connect it to the other end. Now we can take our blue wire, which is gonna be the output signal, put a buck connector in place, and that's gonna to go to the other blue wire coming from our vehicle. Now for our power, our power is going to be coming off of the black wire off of our harness. And if you remember when we were testing, that's going to be the red wire with the stripe on it. We have one more wire left, and that's going to be our red wire coming off of our harness. And that's going to be for the brake signal. So we're going to be attaching that to the white wire with the blue stripe. I'm gonna be using a heat gun to shrink down my connectors. I just wanna mention that if you are using an open flame or a torch, a lighter, anything like that, you wanna be extra careful not to burn the connectors or the wire itself. Now we're gonna to need to find a location to mount our brake controller. Now the only stipulation there is, is we wanna make sure that it's nice and level and it's in the direction of travel with our vehicle. Now seeing how short the wires are, Right here, right underneath our light switch would be a good location because it's not going to interfere with our hood prop and we'll still be able to have access to our diagnostic port. So we can take our bracket and it does come with more than one. If you want to use the traditional style mounting bracket, you can, but we're going to be using the clip-on style bracket instead. We're just going to take two of the provided screws and screw them into the dash. I just want to mention you want to make sure that there's nothing back there that the screws might damage any wiring or anything like that. Quarter inch nut driver and put it into place. I'm going to get the first one started, make sure my bracket is nice and level, and then we can get the second one put in place. Now on the back of our brake controller, we can take our harness plug it in and you can see that it's turning on and letting us know that it's not connected to a trailer. Now we can take our brake controller, slide it into the pocket. I'm going to lock it into place. I'm going to take a little bit of a half inch wire loom just so I don't have these wires sticking out underneath my brake controller, tidy things up a little bit. And if you need some and you want to use it in your application, you can pick some up on our website using part number 459075-1, and that's going to be for half inch loom by the foot. Now one foot should be plenty, this may be a little bit more, we only really need a few inches of it. So I'm just going to take the loom, open it up, and start sliding my wires in, and I can cut off the excess. And come back with a little bit of electrical tape to keep our loom in place and to hide any of the little bit of wire that is still showing. Then we can go ahead and put our panel back in place. Just want to line up the clips and lock it in. And we can come back and make sure the weather stripping is on the correct side. 
I'm just gonna work your way down, pressing the panel back into place. So I got my tester hooked up. So we can make sure that everything, all the functions are working properly. So we'll go ahead and run through our lights and these two meters up here, when we apply the brakes, it'll show the voltage and amperage coming out, making sure our brake controller is sending the correct signal. So here we can see we have our clearance lights, left turn signal, right turn signal, as well as the brakes. And if you watch the meter up top, we can see that the brakes are being applied and that meter is going up, letting us know that the brake controller is sending the correct signal out. And that'll finish up our look at the Takancha Primus IQ Trailer Brake Controller for one to three axles, part number TK90160 on our 2017 Chevrolet Colorado.